G'day guys, Rukshan here. Thanks for joining me for the news vlog this late Sunday night. I apologize for the late delivery of this vlog, but I have a few news stories to share with you guys. First up, it is Rip Girl, apparently an iconic Australian brand now facing some boycott drama because of their woke ideological ESG push by replacing women with transgender people. In this particular photo that I've got here, this is Miss Lowison, a transgender surfer that is now the face of Rip Curl for all intensive purposes as the public sees it because this issue has become uh, somewhat of a controversy for the company. Now, Miss Lawson uh, recently appeared on an Instagram po post promoting uh, women surfing and women's wear. And, you know, obviously as transgender person, uh, this has been marketed towards women Women, women, <laughs> if I can say that. Am I allowed to say that anymore? Who knows? Let me just read this article. Uh, this is in the Daily Mail. Rip Curl faces backlash after using a transgender border, Sasha Lowison, to promote women's surfing. Iconic Australian brand Rip Curl has come under fire featuring a transgender border in a campaign to promote women's surfing. Just want to note there as well, Rip Curl is actually owned now by a New Zealand group, KMD Group or Katmandu. I'll get to that a bit later. Sasha Lawson, 44, featured on the Rip Curl Women's Instagram page on Thursday as a part of the company's Meet the Local Heroes of Western Australia campaign. It comes just months after Rip Curl dropped a former brand ambassador, Bethany Hamilton, one of the world's most famous surfers, reportedly over opposition to transgender people competing in women's sport. So here we have again a photo of the transgender person, uh, surfer Sasha Lawson. And this is actually, this person here is Bethany Hamilton. This is the surfer that was a part of Rip Curl's campaign, but they dropped her. And some people are saying they dropped her and they've replaced her now with this transgender person as a brand ambassador instead. Now, uh, this all comes as, you know, Bethany Hamilton, who's this uh, famous surfer, she's made comments about transgender people being in the sport and competing against women. This is what she has said. One solution would be to have a separate division for trans women to compete in so they could have a fair opportunity to showcase their passion and talent, Hamilton says. So she's opposed to trans uh, gender people competing against women in her sport because, you know, clearly, as we've discussed many times, there is somewhat of an advantage that a male or a transgender person who is now saying that they're a woman would have uh, in an advantage over natural women uh, when it comes to some of these physical sports potentially, right? It, it happens, cycling, we've seen it in cycling. In surfing, we've got male surfers who are now gen uh, transitioning to women and now competing in the women's space. And Bethany's made comments around that. And not soon after that, apparently she was dropped. Okay, that's, that's the story that people are sharing online. Now, Rip Curl, they haven't made a comment regarding this backlash. And, you know, online you'll see uh, posts like R I dot P curl, so her rest in peace, rib curl. So there is somewhat of a boycott on the way against this woke ESG peddling company. And what they did today was they actually put out a little advert um, with women, I believe they're women, or with, I don't know with rib curl anymore, but they've got women clad in bikinis, uh, you know, getting ready to surf or something. All right, let's play this video. There you go. You get the idea. Even but even this little advert they made, which I I commented saying that their PR department must have gotten together late at night, uh, figuring out a way to how to get out of this mess, and they thought, hey, let's just put up a video of uh, you know chicks in bikinis going surfing. That might help us. But so many people are calling out this advert as well, saying that they're just using women to get the gaze of men and other people to you know wash away the problems that they're facing right now. So people aren't buying into this crap from these type of companies anymore, and. The, 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 this descent of madness into this woke ESG nonsense, particularly around replacing women. There seems to be an attack on women from these companies. It's never, never about men being replaced with a woman that's now uh, you know, saying that they're a transgender person, for instance. It's always these women being replaced with me men uh, who are now transgender and saying that they're women in sporting magazines, in other sports or whatever it is. We see it all the time, right? Now, to that end, we also had KMD, um, Kathmandu Group. Uh, they are very woke and ESG-centric. This is an article from last year, right? So this might give us a bit of insight into why they're like this. 
This is the brand CEO, Michael Daly, and this is what he had to say. We feel very strongly that we want to be a clear leader in the ESG space, particularly across Australia and New Zealand. We think that holding ourselves up to this external standard helps us assess this, but most importantly, get better. And they also have an ESG world profile. That's right, an ESG world profile that they promote on their website. So they're very much into this. And a part of that report, this is what they write. As a part of our commitment to supporting marginalized communities, we proudly rolled out International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, training to promote understanding and acceptance of diverse gender identities and sexual orientations. This was attended by a large cross-section of KMD brands, Rip Curl, Kathmandu and Oboz employees from Australia, New Zealand and beyond. Uh, they say that um, Kathmandu also re-accredited as a rainbow tick business. The rainbow tick status tells our customers that we are progressive, inclusive, a dynamic organization that embraces diverse sexual and gender identities and reflects the communities we serve. So yeah, if you want to look that up, you can look up uh, ESG World Profile and KMD and you'll see all their diversity reports and so on. So you can tell this company is very much focused on this, but it comes, I believe, again, at the expense of particular women. And this time you're seeing a women athlete potentially being replaced by a man as an ambassador uh, for differences of opinions on something that is impacting women primarily, um, especially in, a, in, a, in an area like sport. Now, now Riley Gaines, who is a famous uh, swimmer that brought this issue up against another transgender person, Leah Thomas, who was competing in the women's uh, swimming uh, competitions in the US, uh, and she got a lot of crap for her, her advocacy and her stance in, in defending women's sports and defending women's rights on these issues. And this is what she said about this. She said, you mean to tell me that Rip Curl dropped Brittany ha Bethany Hamilton for opposing men surfing in the women's league, then picked up a male surfer who, wants, who surfs in the women's league as a women's ambassador. Crazy. So it's getting a bit of international attention, this story. And on Riley Gaines, actually, Leah Thomas, that swimmer who uh, Riley Gaines actually um, you know, protested against, essentially. And you know, we saw some rules uh, being changed that disallowed uh, people like Leah Thomas competing in women's racing, uh, has lodged a complaint with an international arbitration court to get that reversed. So transgender swimmer Leah Thomas asked CAS to end race, ba race ban rules. Transgender swimmer Leah Thomas has asked a Swiss sports court to overturn rules imposed by World Aquatics that stops her from competing in elite women's races, saying they are discriminatory. The Court of Arbitration for Sports said Friday it had registered Thomas's request, but no date for a hearing was decided. So you can see there's a bit of traction in this space when it comes to this debate being an ongoing one. And you know, my general opinion is all of this is coming at the expense of women. If these transgender athletes, again, it's my opinion, want to compete, uh, they should have separate divisions for them uh, where they're competing against, you know, e in an equal space against other people just like them um, and not competing in the women's space where they, you know, oftentimes, uh, depending on the sport, there is a clear advantage that comes from physical attributes. OK, so there needs to be a clarity around this. Again, my opinion. Now, the next story that I have is around these um, these masked NSN uh, National Socialist Network um, people that went to or neo-Nazis, some people refer to them as in the news as well. Uh, they refer to themselves in all manner of ways, but uh, they've gone to Sydney. So I'm going to play a bit of this news story and then get to the point that I'm trying to make, which is around the introduction that uh, New South Wales is talking about ways of unmasking these people and obviously identifying them to the wider community. Let's have a look. Good evening. Name them and shame them. That's the message from the Premier after a group of masked neo-Nazis descended on a suburban park, performing salutes and spewing hate. The men camped out in secret, but at first light, police were on their tail after North Shore residents found them on their doorstep. Hate and extremism on the North Shore, given the reception it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> but well, he didn't sell Australian flag gear. For the third day in a row, the neo-Nazi National Socialist Network gathered this time at our Tarman Reserve. What's your purpose in Sydney at the moment? Right next to a kid's soccer camp. I think they're really rather laughable. I'm not sure they're... I'll pause it there. I'll just take it to the back end of this. They're racist views. People are being urged to look at these faces and name and shame them. So if you're thinking that you can be anonymous and spread your hate, you can't. You'll be exposed as a racist to your family, your friends, your employers and your workmates for the first time. In Artarman, James Wilson, Nine News.
So anyway, like this has happened. Obviously, uh, it's distressing for some people when they see these groups. Obviously, the lady that first spoke about laughing at them and that reaction is kind of the opinion that many people have when they see them because it is a, it is a much a smaller group than what it's made out to be in the media. Very fringe. Of course, they have views which are not mainstream Australian views, uh, in my opinion, yet it gets overplayed in the media and there's a lot of attention and focus put on them because of the way that they dress and the appearance and also the fact that some of the messaging is clearly um, racially tinged. Um, of, of course, some of them have also done Nazi salutes in the past and um, displayed that type of insignia. So it all becomes problematic with these groups. When you come to the issues around rights of uh, protesting, rights of anonymity, and the government then, you know, talking about uh, finding ways to identify people, unmask people, and all this kind of stuff, then uh, it's another whole kettle of worms because those laws, uh, whether we like it or not, when it's applied to one particular group like this, uh, usually means it's applied to everyone, or at, at least it should be. But what we've seen over the last couple of months especially is that police are not capable of, uh, you know, <laughs> applying things equally to people, right? They use this type of weird discretion when it comes to applying these type of laws. And so many weeks in a row now, we've had all types of people wearing masks, un 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 unidentifiable, uh, covered up, chanting all types of hate slogans, uh, at different groups, right? So depending on which group you are, you can interpret what those people are saying as hatred towards you or your group. You can view it as racist. Some people say those chants that people are saying are genocidal in some instances. So we have this issue happening throughout our society. So my view on this is that, you know, there has to be clear lines around what is protected speech, what type of protest actions are protected, and we can't necessarily uh, just in, re uh, rely on the police <laughs> applying these uh, equally to everyone if it's not made clear and set in stone. Um, you know, and to that end, I wrote this online. A group of people gathering together all masked and dressed similarly while chanting offensive statements to intimidate people they don't like is par for the course in Australia. We only need to look at the weekly protests for all manner of causes. So how ag exactly will these plans by New South Wales government to unmask and make these identities known of such individuals be applied? Will it be e applied equally to all or just targeted at groups and opinions deemed offensive by the government of the day? What is the difference between a group of white Australian people dressed alike spouting offensive remarks and a group of non-white Australian people spouting equally offensive remarks of another kind? If it is illegal, both should be dealt with equally. If it is not, then the police or the government of the day should not receive special, uh, some special discretionary power to pick and choose what qualifies as acceptable speech or protest in this country. If they want to have the power to unmask and identify, then it should be applied equally. Giving authorities p the power to pick and choose the more, is more dangerous than it seems. They will more often than not broaden and abuse such power. So a lot of people think I'm here defending neo-Nazis and defending these groups. I find a lot of these groups and their views, whether it's from the far left, far right, this particular group, abhorrent, and these are things I do not agree with. However, using these fringe groups, okay, a lot of people will say that these groups are actually feds or police because we're seeing groups like this in the US with the Patriot Front. I'm, I don't want to get into any of that, but using these fringe groups, a very tiny, tiny minority of people who are causing this type of trouble in society, to then have more stricter laws on speech, to have more stricter uh, laws on how you can uh, you know, have your anonymity or your privacy protected, I think it's dangerous. And to play into this, I also feel like it's dangerous because we're giving the government and these authorities an upper hand. There needs to be a right balance um, struck here. If there was to be any type of um, you know, attempts to identify protesters here in Victoria or anywhere else in Australia, like they're thinking about in New South Wales, uh, it has to be clearly applied equally and there has to be strict guidelines around this. Let me know what your thoughts are, but I see it as a very clear danger. And it's not because I agree with these views. I wholeheartedly disagree with what the things that they are saying. But I will, you know, in my own way, re defend the rights of individuals to express, you know, stuff, free speech in a legal manner. And it's not always clear what a group of people marching through a street whether they look ridiculous or intimidating because of what they're wearing technically is illegal. Because if that's the case, there's so many people marching, uh, you know, dressed like all manner of things right now in, in, in a similar pattern marching through our streets. But that is not necessarily uh, deemed illegal just because the way that people dress. So we can't make the way that someone looks or their dress illegal uh, when it comes to protests, at least not in my understanding. 
Let me know if I'm thinking about this in, a, in, the, in the wrong way. I'd love to know your thoughts and expand on this in a future episode. I'm also looking at all the comments that I'm getting on Twitter. So you can join the conversation on Twitter as well and share your thoughts with me there. Tell me if I'm wrong, but definitely I'm not defending these, these people. I think it's ridiculous. Last story I have is, you know, a couple of days ago, I was talking about conscription being discussed in Europe and the UK. Well, someone asked me, uh, will they discuss conscription in Australia? Well, turns out there's an Aussie expert now talking about conscription here. And this is from news.com.au. Australia must consider bringing back conscription as all-out war with Russia looms, expert says. Australia must seriously consider reintroducing conscription to boost its troop numbers in the face of a looming all-out war with Russia, a defence analyst says. Rapidly rising global tensions in Eastern Europe and the Middle East threaten to drag Australia into an orbit of an open confrontation. Dr. Alexia Morarev, Associate Professor of National Security and Strategic Studies at Curtin University, said. He added it may be time for Australia to consider an, an, another uncomfortable subject, the return of national service. So yeah, like I'll just answer that question that someone asked me a couple of days ago. Yes, we are now talking about bringing back conscription in Australia. But again, it all seems like it's just part of a media beat up a cycle of stories where experts are asked this question and they give an answer about it and then it's turned into a new story. I don't uh, see in the foreseeable future, you know, conscription being on the cards in Australia. I can't imagine the types of people uh, out there right now in our society who are confused about all types of other things like, you know, the kind of crap that Rip Curl is pushing. Uh, being uh, okay with this idea of conscription, even conceptually understanding what that would mean, right? Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Sorry for it being so late. I will always try to keep it uh, prior to 10 o'clock if I can. Uh, but on busy days, unfortunately, i got to do it at a different time. So if you're enjoying my videos, guys, you can follow me on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button. You can also hit the notification bell if you want to get updates as soon as I post. You can also follow me on X, Instagram, Facebook, Rumble, uh, what else, Odyssey, and everywhere else at The Real Rukshan. See you guys next time.